Welcome to Grey Overload, I'm Anthony, and now we have the PS5 specs. So I think it was a pretty fun day having Sony come out and talk a little bit about their specs. Now, personally, I think part of this is that they want to get their specs out there because Microsoft has been showing everything about the Xbox. So I think they had some pressure there, but I also think that they wanted to get some of the information at GDC that was canceled. So anyways, we finally get the specs and they're very interesting, a little bit different perspective or take than what Microsoft's doing with the Xbox Series X. And people are gonna go down the console and how it performs and everything else. And what I really wanna do is just get the specs out there. I think both consoles will sell. I think that they'll both do, do quite okay overall. I would like to have both consoles, but I'm also not made of money. So um, just going through this though, they will have eight Zen 2 cores at 3.5 gigahertz, but it will be variable of frequency. So same type of boosting mechanism that is in kind of your desktop uh, for Zen. Uh, and that is more interesting where uh, Microsoft is fixed so we're gonna have a little bit difference there to see how the performance is overall because Microsoft I believe was 3.6 gigahertz uh, fixed for eight cores the GPU is what everyone kind of is gonna be focusing on and performance wise they had 10.2 teraflop 36 CU uh, GPU at variable frequency so this will also have boosting mechanisms but the boost is 2.23 gigahertz. Uh, I think that they're starting to figure out how to get, um, one, the new architecture to boost quite well, but also these processes now to get them to boost above two gigahertz for a GPU, this is quite impressive. So it's a custom RDNA 2 uh, GPU architecture with 16 uh, gigs of GDDR6 256-bit bus on that. So that's 448 gigabytes per second and this GPU for the memory bandwidth and everything else you have is quite impressive the variable frequencies the one reason why they have variable frequencies is I'm hopefully I don't get this wrong is that they're gonna have constant power uh, push the GPU and then they are varying the frequencies depending upon the cooling and basically the t temperature level or the power envelope they have so and I'm hopefully I'm getting this right um, and all of their power stuff. They talked a lot about it. I found it really interesting, but they're also using AMD PowerShift. So AMD talked about PowerShift at uh, CES, I think. One of their um, events and how they this year and how they shift power from the CPU over to the GPU depending upon when it needs it. And so you can get more optimal, more performance out of it. So that allows you to get to that high peaking of 2.23 gigahertz and <laughs> yeah having great performance out of that gpu i'm quite impressed that they're able to get that on the manufacturing side so with because this is going to be a monolithic die right everything is going to be on one at least that's what i kind of seemed out of it and uh when they kind of showed it off but we are supposed to see a gpu that can really really boost up so if and they said if you they'd have to down clock it just a few percentage points to get a little bit more power back to be able to do other things so if something's hitting the cpu hard with like 256 instruction set they can adjust a little bit so that they don't go over their power envelope there but the 2.23 gigahertz is something to keep an eye on for the next gen uh gpus on the desktop side we're gonna get it seems like I, I fully expect to have a 2.3 gigahertz or 2.4 gigahertz boost on a GPU in a desktop this next generation at least. Um, I could even see 2.5 gigahertz depending upon how that process comes out because if your console's doing this, I expect a little bit more on the desktop side of things as well. Um, but they spent a lot of time on two main things, which is their SSD and their audio. So to start out with the SSD is a custom SSD. It's 825 gigs. Um, and this is gonna have 5.5 gigabytes per second, as well as if you, that's the raw data transfer. So this is a much faster SSD than what's in the Xbox, but then the typical of eight to nine gigabits per second on the compressed side. And they're using a lot of uh, 
what is it? Uh, Kraken. Um, it's a full custom SOC just for the controller of the SSD. So you can really get that speed, really have that access to all this um, really fast streaming and data. They really did talk about where you don't have to wait for games anymore for the new PS5 stuff. And this is going to be a really, I think, big deal for games going forward. And I'm really excited to see how this operates. It makes me want to have both these consoles because they're, they have different uh, feature sets. Uh, I think here the feature set for Xbox is really, really pounding out the high-end GPU and a lot of the, you know, improvements to that side of, you know, graphical f stuff, HDMI 2.1, etc. Xbox is really focusing on that high frame rate stuff whereas sony is really going to have you know it could still do that but they're focusing on that ssd that getting you in and out of the game super fast um having you just game playing not having you sit down and wait for things and i think they're going to be able to use some of this ssd to really help enhance their games um with their you know overall cu count disadvantage from the xbox so you also have an extra NVMe slot. Now, the NVMe slot will be through tested SSDs that they test that you can put in there, um, but this will not be as fast as a custom one because it just doesn't have all the controller um, technology that is in that specific Sony controller. They also have external uh, hard drive support and a 4K UHD player. Thank you, Sony, finally. Um, that's one reason why I have the Xbox is I like to play 4K Blu-rays a lot. Um, but a really thing that they talked a lot about as well is audio and getting audio right. They're really trying to make, uh, they call it the Tempest 3D Audio Tech. They worked with AMD on this as well as their own custom stuff. And they're really trying to support something that when you are playing, you can be immersed enough where do you know where the enemy is and you can just turn and go after that enemy so they really focused on exactly how everyone's ear is different and their fingerprints and they're trying to use a default um, a hearing footprint basically to get a lot of to, to, so that everyone can really have a great experience with this maybe in some time as he was saying that they create a way that you, everyone can have a different uh, profile on this besides the default profile because he goes when it's his profile he was describing it the guy presenting that he thinks that things are more there and more accurate based upon just his hearing profile so everyone has a unique one but the 3d auto stuff i actually hope kind of comes to pc games uh hopefully amd is able to roll this in some of this technology into their um dev pack maybe even open source it that then people can or developers can take that use it and really have an immersive audio I personally love it when you can get immersed in, uh, you know, the visual side of it and the audio side of it and really just dive into the game and have, you know, a good immersion, good, have, a, have good fun. It makes it more enjoyable, right? If you're always having interruptions or something is off, it kind of breaks up the game. It doesn't really get you into it. But with now with Microsoft and Sony getting all these details out for us, we can kind of really see where these consoles are going to pull the market in going forward it looks like that they're going to have eight zen cores a lot of things i bet you're going to be coded then for the uh, not just zen architecture but the eight cores of the architecture so we can start getting off those a lot of those single threaded apple you know games which there's not really any of those anymore but even still once you start breaking it out and getting all those threads uh, coded up for you're going to start to see I think games evolve faster Jaguar was a different beast right they still had eight cores but Jaguar was a much different processor and you couldn't really translate it to a desktop because it was uh, it was that much different well, not the same instruction sets that Intel had out at the time so I'm really excited to see where that goes these GPUs the boosting side of it is really fun to see that these consoles are boosting just as much as or actually more than your desktop is you know right now 2.33 gigahertz they figured out something and they've tested enough to figure it out they did talk about cooling and items in that nature but really you know they're going to come up with something probably pretty good they don't want to have a whole xbox 360 you know what is it, the red ring of death or something that all the consoles were dying so they're probably going to try to avoid that as well and 
the SSDs. We finally get SSDs in our consoles. No more spinning rust. Finally, and we will be able to see that. I think this is going to set a new, you know, push forward in games. Every console kind of does. So that's a new standard here going forward as long as they're coming out. So that hopefully that then on the desktop side, we get to still see that, um, that improvement and we get that as our baseline going forward. So backwards compatibility, Sony also mentioned, which is good. I like the backwards compatibility stuff and they had to do some things with the whole boosting algorithm and making it smoothed out. Uh, just a whole bunch of little stuff. But really, I'm really excited for is what, you know, they were able to get that huge boost out of them. Custom RDMA 2, RDNA 2, it seems like it's going to be a lot um, bigger deal than maybe at first thought when RDNA 1 came out and there was uh, little tweaks and they just had slight improvements. You know, they came out with um, the 5700. I was like, oh, this is a pretty good card. But if RDNA 2 is kind of the stuff that's leaking out, some of the stuff with now with the consoles, this might be a bigger deal. This might be something AMD is really starting to hit its stride on the GPU side that they did with this uh, CPU side with Ryzen. So let me know what your thoughts are on the new uh, PS5 details that we finally got out that are official now from them. And let me know. I'd love to read your comments of what you think of where this console uh, generation is going to go. Let me know if you're going to even buy the PS5 or the Xbox or if you're just going to stick with your PC. I think there's uh, opportunity for all of them in certain scenarios. And that's why I'm probably going to pick one, one of these consoles up. I'd love to get both, like I said. So um, with that, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for taking the time to help support Gray Relevant and helping this channel grow. I really appreciate it. And I just want to still quick mention again, I've been looking at the Ubiquiti stuff still a little bit more with networking, trying to get my whole house network. I've been starting to order things slowly. You see, I mean, I'm starting to clean up the walls a little bit here and get this basement done. Hopefully I can do more of that in maybe this weekend or something. Not much is going on anyways. So, um, but that's all what's going on. If you guys have suggestions though, I appreciate them. Send me an email. Uh, post a link in the description below to say something in the description. I'll read it and uh, get back to you because I want to make sure I do this right. So um, looking at some of the ubiquity stuff, still haven't pulled the trigger on any networking equipment yet. I need to get the network rack in first, but the one I wanted was in back order. So, um, But if you even got suggestions on which racks that you like, I'd be more than willing to listen. But until next time, God bless, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.